Motorsport 411 presents all the four and two wheeled action. Motorsport 411 with Sean Cartavillas. Welcome to Motorsport 411, your home for all your four and two wheel action in Africa. Coming up in this episode, we speak exclusively to the two-time Safari Rally winner and also a member of the Toyota Gazoo racing team, Glenn Edmonds. We get his thoughts on the new Formula One season and Glenn has the latest on Toyota's preparations for the 2023 WRC Safari Rally. All the four and two-wheeled action. Motorsport 411. Welcome uh, to the show. And Formula One in 2023 is go. Poor getaway for Sergio Perez. Great launch off the line from Charles Leclerc. And they're very nearly making contact into turn number one. Verstappen leads. Leclerc is up to second place. Sainz is going to battle with Sergio Perez. So it was a 1-2 for Red Bull at the Bahrain Grand Prix with Max Verstappen finishing ahead of Sergio Perez. And the big surprise was Fernando Alonso of Aston Martin Racing uh, finishing third. Please welcome back to the Formula One podium for the 99th time, Fernando Alonso, who weaves across the line and celebrates a dream debut with Aston Martin, having provided us with some phenomenal overtakes along the way. Glenn Edmonds is our Formula One analyst and also a two-time Safari Rally winner. Glenn, uh, thank you so much for speaking to us on Motorsport 411. So after months of anticipation, Formula 1 uh, finally got underway with the Bahrain Grand Prix over the weekend. It was as you were with Max Verstappen, a relatively easy victory. Uh, Red Bull 1-2, uh, were you surprised? Well, firstly, it's really great, great to be back with you, Sean. And I was really excited for the weekend and it was so nice to watch Formula 1 yet again. Um, was I surprised about Max winning? Um, no, not really. But I was surprised at how far in front he was of, of the other contenders. And, you know, good job for Checo. Um, it was, for me, the highlight had to be Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin going forward. They've made such huge steps. I was a little bit surprised that Mercedes... Uh, seemed to have firstly stuck with the uh, design that they used last year. Um, and they certainly didn't look um, comfortable any time. I believe that if it wasn't for Lewis Hamilton driving the wheels off the car, they there's no way that he would have been able to finish in that position. You know, hats off to Lewis. He drove a fantastic race in an uncompetitive car. But Fernando... And Aston Martin are certainly going to make the rest of the season lively for everybody. Now, of course, uh, you just mentioned Aston Martin. Uh, they really took the headlines. Uh, fantastic performance, not only by Fernando Alonso, but a man who had two broken hands and a broken toe uh, doing so well. Uh, Lance Stroll, uh, incredible performance, first of all, by Lance. Yeah, it is incredible. But you know what? That's a tribute to the car. And I don't know if you picked up on a few things that Fernando said, how easy the car is to drive. Um, generally, if um, that had been last year's car, there's no way he would have been able to drive it like that. But yeah, he put on a, you know, Lance Stroll put on a fantastic show to come back. And, you know, that was just your adrenaline taking him there he, he put in a great result and he got lots of points for aston martin and i think we, we're seeing a potential um third team in that top three millimeters between the pair of them as they go side by side he's not going to try around the outside oh. but he is going to try the inside of turn 10 Brilliant. what Absol a superb move from fernando alonso absolutely brilliant and i think that was just absolute top shelf from fernando alonso fernando alonso of course uh, looks like he's really enjoying his driving uh you know he takes part in the dakar you know a little bit like uh our good friend uh, Sebastian Loeb, you know, uh, being involved in all forms of motorsport uh, and also an old friend of Kenya. Uh, we remember back in his Renault days uh, when he used to come to Kenya every year. Yeah, you know, he's uh, he is an all-around driver, that's for sure. And, you know, right now, 
Um, he seems to be on top of the world. One thing's for sure, Fer Fernando's choice of teams often has let him down respectfully um but he certainly seems to have picked a good one right now because um he obviously knew something that no other driver knew um jumping into aston martin i was sort of took a, a sharp intake of breath but uh, he certainly proved that it was a good choice now red bull uh, they seem to have got it right uh, at the moment uh, you know it's for them to lose really huh yeah you know everybody thought that this uh ban on wind tunnel time would really affect them and i think it has affected them to a certain extent but you know you've got adrian newley there who, he's a very very clever man and they found a way to get around it and you know he's uh he's put in a lot of hours and that red bull certainly looked like the car um to beat by far i mean max made it look easy as i said earlier on and checo put up a good a good fight to come second i think the whole package of red bull right now is the best it definitely seems that uh, mercedes are a little bit at sea here and you know it's uh, my big concern is ferrari um having uh, a uh, an engine problem on the first race of the series uh, of the world championship that doesn't bode well for them Charles Leclerc is coming to a stop no 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 come on what happened guys no power Charles Leclerc retires from the opening Grand Prix of the year. Two retirements now. Ferrari's reliability problem strike once again. I was just going to talk about that. Uh, Ferrari, of course, with a new team principal. Uh, the vice president of Ferrari was in Bahrain. Uh, they really didn't need that engine failure. No, the vice president did not look happy, did he? Um, but, you know, at least they managed to get Carlos Sainz to the end. And, you know, but we, we've come to expect this from Ferrari. It's much more of the same as we got last year. Uh, we really hope that Vassa, as the new team principal, um, we hear he is a very hard and carly man and he doesn't suffer uh, fools lightly and he will be pushing to get the best out of that team. And I expect us to see some big changes in that team this year, in the fact that moving of personnel and strategy and things like that, because let's face it, their strategy over the last three years has been dreadful. All right, Glenn, uh, let's talk about South Africa because uh, they've been very busy with motorsport. Uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before they had Formula E in Cape Town and then the nine hour GT race at Kailami. Now, you've raced at Kailami uh, back in your racing days uh, when you used to race motorcycles and uh, the track obviously has changed a bit, but... Um, there's a lot of anticipation possibly for 2024 uh, with South Africa getting a Grand Prix for next year, but it all depends on government commitment. Uh, the FIA granting a one-year extension for the Belgian Grand Prix, uh, but really it depends on, as I just mentioned, uh, government commitment for the South Africa Grand Prix to go ahead. Look, I believe that the size of any motorsport, whether it's a WRC coming to Safari or Formula One, going to South Africa, if you don't have a commitment from the government, you will never move forward. I mean, and hats off to the Kenya government for doing so much work to get the safari back. With regards to Kailami, yes, I've raced there numerous times and I've watched probably four Grand Prix, Formula One Grand Prix there. And, you know, it is a fantastic circuit. Um, when I was there, it wasn't so built up around it, but it definitely has a lot of potential. It's proved that it can run a good race and to the FIA's specifications, because the FIA is very, very tough on what they need for Formula One. It can be done, but the government has to back it. South Africa is a motorsport mad nation. The crowds at those places are just for the grand prix when i was there were lined wall to wall i mean having a formula one back in south africa is good for africa full stop um it will also attract a lot of sport tourism i mean i for one would be prepared to travel down there to to go and watch it and things and i know an awful lot of other people from around africa would because it's 
it's attainable, it's reachable, and the racetrack in Kailami is very close to the airport. They've got a great transport system there. Um, if the government, the South African government, throws its weight behind it, um, there's no reason why we shouldn't see the South African Grand Prix there. I mean, it was always on the calendar um, for many, many years, and it's a shame when we lost it. Um, from the calendar, just like it was a shame when we lost the safari here. It would be great to have a South African Formula One Grand Prix back on the calendar and for all of us to enjoy. Glenn, it is a massive commitment uh, for the government to commit for a Formula One Grand Prix in South Africa. Now, we've seen uh, South Africa has the capability to host the biggest tournaments in the world uh, from the World Cup. Uh, we see huge, huge uh, rugby events there, uh, cricket, uh, you know, the list goes on. Um, what, what are your thoughts uh, in terms of the government, uh, you know, signing the dotted line, uh, giving their commitment? I believe that they will sign along the dotted line. The question then will be whether whether they can uh, make the changes because they will be expensive changes that will have to be made and they will have to suit all the rules of the FIA. And uh, it's one thing to sign on the dotted line. It's something else to put your money where your mouth is and make the changes that they require because it will be expensive. But... Um, if there is a commitment, like we saw with Safari, and they get behind it and back it and push it, there's no reason why we, it shouldn't work. Very, very interesting. Now, when we return, uh, the Safari is rapidly uh, coming upon us. It's happening, of course, uh, in June. Uh, Glenn has a big part to play with uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing. Uh, we'll get the latest from behind the scenes in just a moment. All the four and two wheeled action. Motorsport 411. So, welcome back. Uh, Glenn Edmonds uh, with us, of course. Uh, Glenn Edmonds, uh, part of the Toyota Gazoo racing team, who finished one, two, three, four at the 2022 uh, WRC Safari Rally. Uh, Glenn, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Glenn, what's the latest behind the scenes? Well, Firstly, uh, as much as I would like to see a one, two, three, four clean sweep like we did last year, um, I, the odds of that are very rare. Um, it was a it was a special moment last year, um, but the team worked exceptionally hard. I would anticipate that we will see Hyundai and Ford not making the mistakes they made last year. I believe we will see them stepping up. As far as the route is concerned, yes, we've had to make changes because the team uh, and the teams in general believe there was too much pesh pesh last year. Um, Gooby and CD, they've been out there making those changes. I think we're going to see a better event this year because every time safari rally comes around again the organizers on the ground who do the hard work uh, and do the graft they step up so each year the, the safari has become better and better and i don't think this year will be any different i think the organizers will do a really good job but i believe that uh, the safari will put on a good a good show yet again Glenn, uh, those two words, fesh, fesh, uh, they were a major talking point of last year's safari. Uh, your cars uh, came relatively unscathed. Uh, they went through relatively unscathed uh, in the event. Uh, w what do you attribute that to? Um, I attribute that to the team um, understanding the event. Look, they don't come here blind. It, they know what the terrain is going to be like. I talk to them a lot. Um, we discuss issues with them a lot. Um, while I'm on the ground there, when they're developing the car, they send me emails. We talk backwards and forwards. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to develop a car that uh, suits the, the country. For example, they're going into Mexico this weekend, and um, you can be sure that this will be a good event for them. They will use lots of Mexico ideas to bring into Safari. I don't believe the terrain is exactly the same in Mexico, never having been there. But from what I can see, it's quite hard, fast flowing, 
dusty. And so they will use whatever they can from Mexico and develop it for Kenya. And then they'll come out with a, a car that is ready to go. From my standpoint, I've put in in place everything that we need for safari um, from my experience over the last two years working with toyota i know exactly what they want i know exactly what they need and so um all of those are already in place so from hotels to forklifts to uh, scissor jacks to hire cars special rooms for the toyota gazoo advertising people to work at the track with all of that is already in place, signed off, deposits paid. If they want, said to me tomorrow, we're coming, the safari has been moved three months earlier, we're coming next week, all I'd have to do is make a few phone calls and everything would be there. Um, this is a sort of arrangement in the organization that Toyota has. And they work very hard to ensure three, four events, they are ready for the event. Um, as you know, Mexico will be the first event this year that's at altitude and that's going to be hot and is away from those freezing colds. So I anticipate that the cars will have lots of new air dams and air ducts that are homologated to keep the cooling down. And that's something that we see here in Kenya. So in a way, having Mexico before Safari works on all the team's benefits, because every team will be doing the same thing as we're doing. I think if you were to ask me who my money is on, I, I would have to say uh, Sebastian Oje. He knows Mexico. He likes Mexico. He's done well there. You can never uh, count out Cali Rovampera and definitely Elfin Evans, who's got something to prove this year. So I'm expecting to see some fireworks from Elfin. Interesting, and you mentioned Oje. Uh, do we see Oje coming for the safari? He absolutely loves the safari. Yes, I do see Oje. He is a master of safari. Last year, as you know, he had a puncture on one of the stages that dropped him down, um, and then team orders were, were put in place. Um, I think that uh, he will come because he knows uh, hit Kenya, and let's face it, Kenya is all about experience. All those many years ago, uh, locals won the safari because of their experience here. And it was only when the Europeans started to come and spend time here that they were able to take that mantle away from the local Kenyans. But I think we will see OJ here. Um, and, I, and I hope we do because the Kenyans love him and he's a, a great competitor. And he's not done yet with rallying. The snorkel, a lot being spoken about it. Uh, will we see the snorkel on these Rally 1 cars this year? Mm, you know, it all depends on whether they've been homologated with the snorkel. Um, I don't think we'll see a snorkel because, I'll be honest, from a Toyota standpoint, we were able to minimize the amount of dust. We were changing uh, air filters as precaution every every service. But really, at the end of the day, I think the day of the snorkel is gone. I may be wrong, um, but, you know, I think part of the problem last year uh, with the Hyundai was that its lack of development, initial development, because they were late with funds, hurt them. They had a, a breather system in the front of the car that literally sucked air straight into the air filter, knowing full well that Kenya is full of pesh pesh. I mean, we were running an air filter system for the engine itself, as well as a system inside the car that was able to keep the drivers cool. Glenn, a lot of subplots uh, behind the scenes as well. Uh, you got Oitanak now at M Sport Ford. Uh, Sebastian Loeb uh, most likely uh, going to come to the safari again. Uh, you know, it would be a very, very interesting safari, this. You know, let's face it, Oitanak is a talent. Um, and he's done well all over the world. Uh, he now knows Safari, what it's like, what, to, what it's like to drive here. He knows what's needed. He will not uh, allow Ford to come here unprepared. You know, again, uh, Malcolm Wilson, personally, from what I know, he's never been a, a super fan of Safari although has won it many times with Colin McRae and other drivers at Ford. Having Oit there, now I think we've got a new star with Ford, and 
you can't write off Ford and Safari. The Ford and Safari, the two names are synonymous with this event. Yeah, Sebastian Loeb, of course, he's got tons of experience, uh, not only, uh, you know, with rallying, but also with the Dakar as well. Uh, you know, he was very competitive until his car had issues. Yeah, yeah. Sebastian Loeb is um, the driver of the century, really. And uh, he knows Safari. He's got a lot of experience with Dakar. He will be able to work very closely um with the team and ensure that they make the steps forward that they need to i mean you can't come to safari without having everything in place because safari will bite you and that's my worry um with any team is that if you come here believing that you've got all the answers that's when safari bites and we all know rallying in kenya it's never over until the podium uh, until then you've got to believe that anything can happen here which is one of the reasons actually that walter roll hated the safari it's because it was too unpredictable and roll hates unpredictability whereas a lot of the other uh, drivers of that era mickey biazon etc they love that unpredictability and and it's what makes rallying in, in africa so special all right, Glenn, uh, thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, we really appreciate it. Of course, we'll be keeping in touch with you, uh, particularly with the Safari Rally around the corner. Thank you so much for speaking to us on Motorsport 411. It's great to be back, and I'm always here to talk to you, Sean, at any time. That's the two-time Safari Rally winner and also a member of the Toyota Gazoo racing team, uh, Glenn Edmonds. We'll be back. Motorsports 411 with Sean Cardavillis. So that's it for the show this week. Our thanks once again to the two-time Safari Rally winner, Glenn Edmonds. Our thanks as always to Big City Studio. I'm Sean Carter-Villis. See you next week.